Okay, hey, um, I just flew in from being like SVP engineering or something at Mozilla. I'm kind of busy lately, and I was also at this thing called Fluent, um, but I'm doing a, a talk that's going to have more nerd core stuff in it because I know and love my JSConf audience. Um, so thanks for being here. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the web as a native code platform, um, which seems crazy. It wasn't really um, working well until recently. And um, I want to show what you guys all come, came here for, which is to see Epic Games um, Unreal Engine 3. I think I'm electrified. Uh, I'm not going to move, except I'm going to have to play a game. Um, and I'll talk about the tools you, that you may be familiar with for doing this. Um, why AAA games? What does AAA game mean? I'm told it means like Halo and top end, you know, um, Xbox, PlayStation games. These really do want to be C and C++ games and to run at full speed they have to be compiled that way. You know, John Carmack said this at QuakeCon last year, he's quite right. But um, they're a good torture test. They exercise all the hardware, um, they stress memory and load time. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And so, um, yeah, I switched from Wesley to Patches. Actually, uh, I have both. So, we're very interested in pushing the boundaries of the web, and even though if you really want to go full speed, there's nothing like C or C++, if you want to reach everybody with a safe, non-scary, on the web, just click and it runs experience, you need the web stack. The web stack was pretty lame uh, for a while. We, we had to reboot browser competition with Firefox, and then it really got better, um, and then it got even better. Some of this stuff, you know, index DB, okay, um, it's getting there, it's a work in progress. The web is a work in progress. But there's really awesome stuff coming um, between the, like Mozilla and uh, Google people. We've got pointer lock, gamepad, full screen, working pretty well, um, web sockets. And then stuff we're doing, again, collaboratively with Google, like WebRTC gets you even farther. You have NWAY, low latency data, as well as audio and video communications. And web audio, which the Google guys originated, great for multi-shot effects, something you really can't do with HTML5 audio, um, positional effects, the whole works. So this is a pretty good platform now. It's, you know, it's a little lumpy. It grew uh, gradually, but it can do a lot. And yet it's cut off from native code unless you use Emscripten, which I think everyone here has probably heard of. Even then, Emscripten was generating code, Alon Zakai, super genius at Mozilla Research, figured out how to generate JavaScript that ran pretty fast, but until we formalized something called ASM.js, it wasn't clear how fast it could be. We wanted to, to push to predictable performance, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. So now we've got a native code platform, it has a bunch of stuff, and it works. In some ways, it's just another compiler target, but maybe it's the last compiler target, because once you're done, you know, game guys do this all the time. They port, they look at the audience size, they see you know, PS4, they'll port to that. The web is, is really huge. There are maybe 8 million to 10 million developers. I, I don't know if Mary Meeker had this in her latest slides. Um, it's going to be 20 million. I talked to Mark Andreessen last year, and he's betting on GitHub big because he sees the developer community around open source, show your work, um, really heavy JavaScript emphasis, he sees that growing to be bigger than any, any native platform. The, the population of native stack developers is in the hundreds of thousands by comparison. So, time for demos. And we are still working on code loading, so you will, you will have to uh, bear with this initial experience. It's getting better. Um, we can do parallel loading in workers. Uh, we can make it better. And it turns out a lot of the code loading is not JavaScript compile time, so we've, we've got something else to blame. Um, let's make sure this is going to be loud. Am I on audio here? I'm plugged in. I don't hear my volume. Oh, thank you. Good. Let's hope that isn't too much. So this is, um, this is the fly through. This is the sanctuary level of Unreal Tournament. It's Unreal Engine 3. This is all JavaScript. Um, there's no plugin. It's all WebGL, of course. You want to get on the GPU. That's a good thing. 
and I'm going to show you my mad skills. They're over here. There they are. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I better get out of here before I get killed. It's a good thing I'm invincible. All right. <laughs> there, thank you. Technical issues. Um, that wasn't possible a year ago. Uh, we had no guarantee we could get to the speed we got until we did some work I'll talk about now. So when you, you think about reaching people, you have to think about JavaScript. You guys know this, I'm a JSConf. Um, and JavaScript VMs are fast, but they, they, they don't necessarily give you the predictable performance you want. So when you run a compiler like a C++ compiler built on the LLVM framework, it's kind of misnamed, it's not a VM, it's a compiler framework, which is what Emscripten uses, it's an awesome framework, um, it's what Clang uses. Um, you, you can tool to JS, but can you get the speed? So it turns out you can. Compiled code can be faster. It can be um, deterministic in types and memory use. It can take the, the static types of your C++ program, apart from unsafe casts, and map those to JavaScript, and you can preserve that mapping. If you don't do it, you have code like this. We all know this code. It runs pretty fast in JITs. But you're having to guess in the JIT that that i is an integer. You don't know what x might be. You're having to guess that the sum, s, won't overflow into a double. And if it does, you might have to recompile. Um, one of the insights that Alone had was to take typed arrays from WebGL and use them as the heap, use them as the, the memory for data, not the control stack. And that can really give you speed up, because then you're, you're modeling memory as a bunch of 32-bit integers or bytes or both. You can, you can model it multiple ways, you can have multiple views onto the same underlying buffer. Um, and that gave a good speed up with Emscripten. But what we need to do is go further. We need to get out of the unpredictable misspeculation regime of JITs. The garbage collection pauses are also an issue. And if you load code, you end up with large amounts of code, and you end up with inevitable misspeculations, recompilations, um, hard to analyze, data flow, let's say. If you're doing type inference, it, you hit scaling limits. So ASM.js is our answer to this. ASM.js is a subset of JavaScript currently, and our intention is to extend JavaScript so it always remains a subset. That's not really cheating. We're, we're always extending JavaScript anyway. If there's a gap in the language, we try to fill it if it's got legitimate use cases. So this is just another one of those um, drivers of use case um, extension, use case-based extension. And that helps us run in other browsers, which is also important. If you, if you tell someone they need a new plugin or they need to get a new browser, you're going to lose a lot of users. If you tell them it runs a little slower, it might actually be tolerable. It might also put competitive pressure on other browsers to level up. And that happens all the time. We've been doing it forever. You know, in 2008, when V8 launched, there was a performance war that hasn't ever stopped, really. And it's still going on. And I'm going to use the latest V8 numbers when I show results here. So what does AsmJS look like? It looks like this. Um, version of JavaScript where you use coercions that are written as bitwise operators, like that single bar zero, where pointer is stored back as an integer because it's been ORed with zero, which doesn't change its value assuming it was an integer, it just, just makes sure that it is an integer. And since that assignment dominates the rest of the uses of pointer, you can be sure it's an integer, and if pointer is recomputed, it gets, it gets re reord with zero. And you can do similar things for unsigned with triple write shift. It's a good thing I added those operators to JavaScript in uh, 1995. It, it was uh, something I wanted to do as a low-level C hacker. Uh, it was in Java. It didn't make sense to leave them out, even though their precedence is kind of wrong. There's a nice history of that from Dennis Ritchie about why that happened. Um, but it turns out they're pretty important for ASM.js and other sorts of things. People have been hand coding bitwise operators for various special purposes in JavaScript, and now it's, it's critically important. Um, and, and this is something you'll also see in Mandrill, another uh, scripting like compiler. Um, what we do with ASM.js is we make sure we know that 
there's always a uh, sound type at every join point in the control flow graph. We know what the types of things are, and if we, if we have to take a, a coercion step, we will put it in the generated code. Um, and we can analyze not only for types, we can also make sure all the memory in the heap is understood so that we don't have any garbage collection pauses. That would really hurt your gameplay. Um, so let me talk a little bit more since this is JSConf about, oh yeah, this is, I wanted to talk about this other stuff. I'll get to it. ASM.js has um, a very simple structure and it has this hint, use ASM. Now that currently doesn't mean anything. If you, if you ignore it, you still can run pretty fast in, in, for instance, V8. And they did some work to make it even faster just before Google I.O. But if you actually do take that hint, you can do what we call ahead of time compilation. It's not like you're running the compiler um, before you even go load your code. It's happening though all at once and you can analyze everything. You can see the entire module, which is what's going on here. You can see a type system. This is where um, Dave Herman invented some funny names like doublish and intish. I don't know if elvish makes sense. Um, dwarvish, dwarfish, uh, dwarvish, that's right. Tolkien said dwarvish with a V. Trollish, we should have trolls. Um, and and what this is doing is it's saying, with JavaScript's bitwise operators, we, we can have int types. We can have int types that might have to be coerced back to int if they cross a boundary. So we're modeling that, formalizing this. Um, and one more thing I want to show here. This is the ASM.js spec. It's on asmjs.org. Um, is how this works for operators. When you, when you look at how um, JavaScript works. It has all the math operators, but currently they operate as if things were double precision floating point, which isn't the best number type for going fast. You want to stay in your CPU and your ALU. You want to use integer operations. So these, these types help us do that. Um, in some cases, it's hard to, to make sure you stay there when you, for instance, do a multiply. 32-bit times 32-bit might give you 64 bits. It might have to go to a double. We actually have something in ES6, it's already in, called math.imol, which is an integer multiply. So that helps. That's an example of extending the language, really easy extension uh, to, to make ASM.js still be a subset, make things go faster. Uh, and we also have the math library, of course, and we have these nice WebGL typed arrays. So let me get back to my Prezo. Um, that's how ASM.js works. How fast is it? Well, this is pretty, these are fresh results. I think um, blue is Firefox. Red is Chrome um, Canary with the latest V8, and it has um, pretty good performance for the micro benchmarks, the first nine. In fact, if you look at this chart, one along the bottom means same speed as native. The life, uh, I think it's Conway's life benchmark, supposedly runs faster than native in V8 and Firefox. That's actually a Clang bug. GCC beats them both, as you'd expect. We're not gonna really beat native speed um, unless there's something wrong with a native code compiler. Uh, but these micro benchmarks are, are somewhat trivial. If you look at the bottom six, those are macro benchmarks. Those are real significant programs. They have those scaling problems I mentioned when run in uh, a non-ASM.js optimized engine. And you see this with, with Chrome. Now, the V8 guys want to keep pushing and see how fast they can get without having to do the kind of ASM.js verification that we do. And I hope they succeed. I, I am not concerned about which way wins. Everybody wins if we get to the same speed. But right now, because we do this ahead of time, verified, all at once compile step, we actually are, are on box 2D, uh, 1.33 times slower than native code, which is, is gonna get only faster as we keep going. We have more optimizations ahead of us. So we're getting to the point where you don't care about the slowdown from native code on modern hardware. And even on the average hardware on the web, the reach of the web, the lack of a plugin or a scary install dialog or a need to switch browsers makes this a winning proposition for game uh, developers like Epic Games. We worked with them just in four days we brought up Unreal Engine 3. That was amazing to them because, because of the power of Emscripten, because we had ASM.js, um, Odin Monkey optimizing backend and Spider Monkey. At the end of a week in Raleigh, North Carolina, we had Unreal working and they, they were blown away. Um, so that's where we are right now. Um, and we're pushing that, that down toward one point pocket change X slower than native. And that's, I think, gonna change the world. It isn't really for hand coding. People are doing it. There's a guy on GitHub who's doing an awesome job, but um, generally you don't wanna do it. The tooling isn't there. You'll get verification errors if you make the slightest mistake, if the types don't agree at all the join points. Um, if there's an inscription bug, you might get that. We're still early, so we had some, some friends at um, 
Intel working with it, and they said, hey, it's only 12 times you know, slower than native. It's not 2 or 1.3 times slower. What's going on? And I said, look in your console. And sure enough, they were having uh, verification errors. And alone, Zakai fixed the inscription bug right away. So we're bringing it up. And you don't want to hand code it too much. Um, never say never. People talk about writing assembly windows in JavaScript. The problem is right now, the boundary crossing is a little expensive because we're doing this. Uh, verification because we have to make sure the types going in satisfy the constraints inside the ASM blob where they can't change. So there's some overhead that makes it not yet desirable to write ASM windows, but it could happen. So this is part of my talk where I see an evolutionary process that is running native code uh, on the web at near native speed, but safely with no extra plugins, no memory safety loss or any other concern like that. Um, that's big. But people say, what about my needs? What about Blub? Um, and you know, it's a good question. JavaScript isn't for everyone. Um, I think I was retweeted saying it is by far not the best language um, for every task, let's say. I know uh, it's gotten better, and people like it, and that's good. And I'm working on it, because it's not going to go away. So I think it's, it's, we're obligated to work on it. But um, there are other languages that people are more productive in. Why shouldn't they use them? So, you know, trans compilers, if you're at the same semantic level, not a big deal. Source maps are, are here, I think, in, in Firefox and Chrome. Um, things are getting to the point where you may be able to just use languages like Python, Ruby, um, Lua. Now, if there's a real semantic gap, and this, I think this happened with Dart, but I'm afraid they took out big nums. They had int as a big num type, uh, arbitrary precision integer. We could have added that to JavaScript. It's still on the agenda. It might happen in ES7. But because it wasn't um, efficient in Dart to JS, or it wasn't even implemented, I think, it was just double, which isn't semantically the same, not the same as Dart VM, they took it out. I feel that's, that's, that's a mistake. I think if you need something like big nums, if there's a good reason for it in your language, in your audience, then maybe we should add it to JavaScript. Big nums are something I wish I'd added in 95. It would have settled a lot of arguments early, but there wasn't time. Um, so. You know, how, how good can we get with just transcompilers? Um, not clear. Uh, but as we fill these gaps, we can do a lot with the languages that are near the level of JavaScript. Now, some languages want GC. And if they're running a GC in this big typed array heap, and we can actually connect that heap to the DOM or JavaScript objects, which is on the roadmap, now we have a problem of two garbage collectors fighting. So you don't want multiple GCs. You want to have one GC rule them all, like in .NET, like the modern JVM, which supports multiple languages but has one GC. So you want the JavaScript GC to have hooks, safe hooks, that the ASM.js generated code can use in the guest heap, which is that typed array. And that's on the roadmap. I wanted to just acknowledge this as an open issue we're working on. Um, Alon Zakai has got um, Lua VM, this is not Lua JIT 2. This is not the super awesome you know, assembly coded jitting Lua. But it, this is still pretty fast. On micro benchmarks, Lua JIT 2 beats it. But on, on real Lua benchmarks, which there are surprisingly few in the web, um, this, is, this is not a bad VM. It's faster than Python and Ruby, C Python. Um, this is imscripted. And it works pretty well. And it, it um, I'm going to run it here and see how it works. It, it's just a big C VM, nice. Uh, efficiently written portable um, interpreter VM. And it has a garbage collector. That garbage collector is not yet married to the JavaScript garbage collector. So there, there is a, an issue with um, leaks, right? The way this is running right now, it's just going to allocate memory and not collect. Having it run its own collector is possible, and then it can scavenge space. Again, if you ever connect things between the, the guest and the host heaps, you'd have problems until we, we do this lifting of the, the host GC into the guest heap, which is possible. I hope this is going to finish soon. <laughs> um, so if it isn't, I'm going to have to go play some more games. Uh, and another open issue is JITs. So I mentioned Lua JIT 2. If you want to take, a, say, a C code base that has some, some assembly code generation, some machine code generation into writable, executable memory. And script is not going to solve that for you. And it's formally unsafe. So we'd have to do something like what the NACL guys have been working on. I'm not sure where that is. I saw activity uh, the other year about it, but it doesn't seem like it's, it's a big thing. I think it's happening in the mono world, too. 
you can do it. You have to be able to generate verified ASM code. You have to be able to invalidate it when the JIT misspeculates. So whether this pays off or not in the long run is an open issue, but if, it, if it's important, we can do it. It's just more work. It's on the roadmap. Um, and then threads. This is actually significant. If you talk about native code, C, C++, people say, where's pthreads? I have to be able to write you know, multi-core code. They're right. JavaScript has always had a race-free, memory-safe model of execution, which doesn't allow you to observe shared mutable state. Uh, you can see it only at event loop turns. So there is this you know, coarse-grained uh, shared mutation. And that, that's enough. That causes people enough headaches. If you actually had fine-grained you know, races to update memory, if you had people doing busy waiting on memory, um, in JavaScript, you'd have problems that we don't really want. In the language, you'd have to make your VMs multi-threaded. Nobody's done that. The Java VM in the 90s started out that way, and it was incredibly expensive. They had research. David Bacon did it. IBM Research to optimize using atomic instructions. And eventually, they realized, well, we can't really afford this overhead anyway, so they ended up adding like single-threaded versions of all their data structures. But if you look at V8, SpiderMonkey, JavaScript Core, all these engines are single-threaded in their implementations, and that's important. So we must not pollute the JavaScript semantics, either at the language level for hand coders or in the VMs with data races. On the other hand, ASM.js is a target language for C. If it's all ASM code, C semantics are good enough, right? There are games that are going to do busy waiting. There are games that are going to do shared um, you know, mutexes and, and condition variables and, and atomic instructions. So if we can verify, and this might require that use ASM directed to mean something, if we can verify that these workers that are racing over d data, shared memory, running on different cores, giving you that great parallel speed up, are all ASM all the time, then I think we can do it. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep data erases in the bottle of the ASM.js only workers. And I think that's a fair extension to do, and I think it's going to happen. It is not something we have yet persuaded others in the standards bodies to believe in, but it, it seems like a shorter evolutionary step than anything else you can think of. Like adding general threads to JavaScript is just not going to happen. Uh, I guarantee it. And, um, and we'll, we'll make sure that we don't let these data races leak out. So this leads me to what informed the, the abstract for my talk, which is I had this sort of depressing feeling when I wrote that abstract that we were going to have a race like the one between John Henry and the steam-powered hammer that JavaScript hand coders, heroic people who've really helped co-evolve the language and the libraries, who've made all this great progress possible, as much or more than the, the VM implementers, in my opinion, would be like John Henry. They'd be like hammering away in this, this, this compiler, this set of VMs or automations for compiling programming languages would be hammering away. And John Henry, the human coder, would, would win, but then his heart would give out, and that would be it. And then we'd be in this, this modern, uh, postmodern, or maybe matrixy dystopia of compilers. I still worry about this. You, you hear about things like OpenCL as a sort of bastard language derived from C99 being pushed as WebCL, and it's supposed to let you program you know, GPUs. Sounds good. It's got all this crazy um, storage class um, qualifiers you put on data to say whether it's in, you know, nearby or far away. It's in global memory. It's really slow. Uh, programming the GPU is not easy, and if we all wrote OpenCL or WebCL, I think the world would be a, a worse place. You know, view source wouldn't mean as much. There'd be uh, less code sharing. There'd be um, sort of more like a, a, a world of applets or Swifts or, or um, you know, binaries from the Windows uh, desktop era. I don't think we can stop this, but I actually got less depressed as I thought about more. I think if it's still an open race. John Henry's heart hasn't given out. You guys have to help John live. Uh, I think it can be done. And, and it isn't just that JavaScript has this incumbent advantage. I, that, that's part of it. And that's you know, fair or unfair, that's just the way it is. JavaScript's there in all browsers. Even if there are compilers generating ASM code, it'll always be good to load some JavaScript fast and go through the dynamic JITs. Um, JavaScript and the web browser, the whole client side of the web, even Node.js on the server, it's not the same as native code. You don't need to write everything as you did in the old days. You don't need you know, millions and millions of lines of code to do cool applications. You have the network. You have clouds. You have GPU clouds, as I talked about on my blog recently. Even if you're offline, you're not going to take your whole server NoSQL database into your local memory. You might do something like that with 
navigation controller, Alex Russell and others are working on, but it's going to be a subset. And it's going to run in JavaScript. So there's still uh, this sort of novelty and asymmetry with the web and with JavaScript that I think makes it uh, something that will continue to endure even when there's compiled code. For games, though, you have million line code bases. They have to be written in C++ because that's the language to go fastest metal on a, you know, PS4 or Xbox. It makes sense. So I think we will have both compiled and JavaScript hand-coded um, code for a long time to come. And that makes me say, um, you knew it was coming. I'm going to say always bet on something. Um, but, you know, people object. We're in this evolutionary regime. It wasn't all planned. I didn't plan this, right? I had put in bitwise operators because I'm a C hacker. I thought they might be useful. I couldn't justify taking them out of the grammar. Um, and it just, I knew the grammar by heart, so I just implemented the whole thing. And it turned out to be useful. Um, and so, you know, this pelican, don't make fun of it for looking like a urinal. It, it's a happy, beautiful creature. Um, <laughs> You know, this, is, this actually isn't, a, isn't, isn't the animal, it just looks like a monkey, but it's a sponge. Um, and I don't think this actually really fits the WTF evolution site, the Tumblr site's um, meme, but it's funny. Um, but I'm going to close as I usually do, always bet on JS. Thanks. Thank you very much.